We're the ones who are vaulting over the fences and peeking in through people's windows. We're the ones who are throwing garbage in the streets and lighting fires. We're the ones who are acting suspicious and paranoid. Eyes. We're the lunatics. Us. It's not them. Sequel. Re re reboot. Which one will it be? It's the Ruined Childhood Podcast. Greetings, Starfighters! Thank you for tuning in to Ruined Childhoods. Whether you're a subscriber or maybe you saw, hey, there's a podcast talking about the burbs. We're glad that you're listening. Uh, I'm Dan, and with me, as always, is John. How's it going, John? Pretty groovy, Dan. Thanks for asking. I will say, though, I have been experiencing uh, lower back pain recently. So uh, I, 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 I am hopped up on Advil. I've got a glass of wine. The two shall interact and do their thing. So uh, we'll oh see how this goes. God, it's going to uh, be off the rails tonight. It's going to be Advil off the rails. Through his system. <laughs> oh, when that uh, Advil kicks in, I'm going to oh, know because your eyes mm, are just going to mm, go mm. all buggy. Got to love that stuff. It's, Everything. you know, I can't believe they sell it over the counter. It's just unreal. It, it is a crime and we should enjoy it while it's legal. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dan, I, I wanted to. We've got to... a Republican Congress now, okay? Oh, like, geez. we don't know what Anything is, is possible. No, yeah. not, um, at least the House. Um, so anyway, sorry, John, you were saying? No, you sh- you never need to apologize for, for talking about the current state of uh, the U.S. political system. Um but I wanted to talk about a a movie that I watched recently because I uh, it actually was very relevant to a line of thinking that I was having regarding this podcast that you and I do here called Ruined Childhoods, in which we do talk about movies and uh, kind of wrap it all together when we talk about how we would bring things back as a remake or thing you know something like that and i was watching the the netflix movie hustle uh starring adam sandler have you watched that one dan i have not no okay. i've kind of been on the fence about it so it's really me. good well i i watched it because i noticed that adam sandler has you know been in a lot of uh you know there, there's been a lot of chatter about his performance being potentially o- award worthy i mean seeing the competition it's like well i mean it's nice to invite him to the room but let's face it he's not it's walking the year up of fraser stages. my friend uh, fraser but also talking about you know uh kihi kwan and and other talented actors yeah. who you know it's like not just for best actor but you oh know, no yeah, yeah yeah so um and i thought that it, i mean i thought that it was really good and he uh plays a basketball scout right. and uh he is let go by the team that he's been working for for forever, the Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, it's just as he has found this like international superstar. Uh, the only problem is that he has these, this history with anger issues. And Dan, I'm wondering if you can think of what movie that might remind you of. Punch Drunk Love? <laughs> Well, no, hold on, hold Dan. on, wait, wait, hold on. Actually, John, hold on, stop. In I just which, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because actually, there were three movies I thought of as you were as you were summarizing. So okay. maybe I should work backwards because the very last mo- the the at the very last thing with anger issues, I was like, oh, punch drunk love. But before that, you were like international basketball star, and I thought of My Giant with Billy Crystal, which I've never actually seen, but it co-starred okay. an international basketball star. And before that. <laughs> I was thinking of the scout where uh, with Brendan Fraser. <laughs> so yes, so Dan, uh, that's exactly. By the way, right. um, if you're listening and if you're like, yeah, man, more Brendan Fraser, you can get a T-shirt at our <laughs> uh, T Public shop. Oh, I'm just so happy for Brendan Fraser. So yes, Dan, the scout. Uh, yes. Because I was thinking about was that, that movie. The right one? <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, okay. It's the exact plot of the scout, where uh, you know he is, uh, you know he he's fired by the Yankees mm-hmm. uh, because they, you know the the last person he brought in 
you know, kind of stormed off in a in a cold sweat, Michael Rappaport. And uh, he basically got sent off to the middle of nowhere, thinking like, oh, you're not going to come up with anything. But he ends up seeing this guy, Steve Nebraska, played by Brendan Fraser, who is like this virtuoso baseball player who can pitch faster than anybody else. He can bat righty or lefty. He's amazing. And uh, the only problem is that he does have these uh, psychological issues uh, that present themselves in the form of, you know, violence in certain cases. And and so he has to go through the process. What happens uh, throughout the rest of the movie differs uh, a little bit here and there, but um, it's it's really the same concept. And I, I was thinking, I was like, wow, this is really a you know, a, a loose remake, but it's, I, you know, kind of a spiritual remake to The Scout, and uh, which is not a bad thing at all. I think that uh, The this, this Scout, uh, and for anybody um, who's unfamiliar with it, it's Brendan Fraser and Albert Brooks and Diane Weist. And as uh, as yes. our listeners, our longtime listeners know, uh, Dan and I, we are, we are Weisty boys uh, oh. through and through. So, uh, you know, you got to love that. Diane Weist is... Uh, is Brendan Fraser's therapist right. and all Albert Brooks, who is the scout, the, the titular scout uh, wants to do is just get him cleared for a psychological evaluation so that uh, he can get signed for this deal so that he can get paid. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it for, puts Albert uh, Brooks back on top. Sure. I, I mean, sounds kind of like hu- the natural too. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but uh, in hustle for Adam Sandler, it's less of a, I need to do this to, uh, you know, become a relevant scout again. It's I need to do this because I believe in this person and I'm going to put everything I have to the side and in an effort to, you know, make this happen for this kid. You know, of course, he does have personal things at stake, but they're not as uh, severe, I guess, for, Mm -hmm. you know, than it is for Albert Brooks. Um, uh, though big shout out to Queen Latifah, who plays Adam Sandler's spouse in the film, uh, and is is so great. I you know feel like I oh, haven't yeah. seen her in a while, and she's always so fantastic. And it's it was a they they played off each other really nicely, and it was um, I think it'd been like a pretty long time since I've really seen Adam Sandler. Well, uncut gems aside, but you know like a real like a Happy Madison movie, which is this was you know it's part oh, of okay. his like Netflix deal. Uh, you know it's like. Uh, He's essentially like part of the studio system back in the day, except for it's for Netflix. You know, they gave him I, like a zillion dollars to make whatever movies forever with them. Well, it's it's true. I mean, you know, I think about it. He also did that uh, Noah Baumbach, the My- Meyer- Meyerowitz stories. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That was a Netflix. That was a Netflix right. joint, yeah, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, which I I started. I never finished it. I need to. I never. Uh, I wait. I think I did maybe watch an episode of that. Yeah, but anyway. Uh, speaking of of Bombach, I guess I'll speak. I I have not watched all. So if you're if you're a new listener, if you're if you've been listening for a while, you know this already. But uh, I tend to only be able to watch movies in sittings, and uh, uh, I have not yet finished White Noise. But I've read the book uh, several years ago, and I have to say, I don't know if you could have gotten it any closer. Well, Dan, not having read the book, I can't really weigh in on its accuracy to the tone of the the book itself. But I loved White Noise, the, the film. I thought that it was really fantastic, and it really felt unlike anything else that I had really seen, especially recently. Because it, it, I think it, I mean, I would need to go back and read the book again, but it felt to me like it, it definitely made me feel like I was reading the book again in, you know, in a good way. It reminded me of reading it and what I thought and what I felt reading it. It doesn't quite explain as much, though I, I would say it, you get enough from it. Did so, you see the scene uh, in which Adam Driver is uh, talking about the way that Hitler, because his character is, you know, 
Hitler studies. I, I forget exactly he how invented, they say He invented, like, the department. He, like, founded yeah. the department of Hitler studies. Like, Hitlerology. Studies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so he's talking he's about... Not, and and to, and to be clear, he himself is not a, like, neo no 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 no, 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 no. But he is giving a lecture about uh, the way that Hitler was able to draw an audience. And uh, simultaneously, Don Cheadle is another professor talking to students about how uh, Elvis was able to draw an audience. And they're talking about the parallels between the two and talking about uh, how Elvis had a very strong connection with his mother and Hitler had a very strong connection with his mother. And uh, it was a a really beautiful scene that was just like, you can't take your eyes off of it. You're talking about the scene where they're going back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yes, it was brilliant. And I was disappointed. Uh, I mean, maybe I missed it, but I did not see White Noise on the Oscar nominations. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm wondering if it got, well, maybe it was up for adapted screenplay. I don't, I I don't mean, even know. I mean, how could it not be? Like, all right, so White Noise as a novel, it's this satire of culture in the 80s, In but still like, you know, it's got this Hitler thing going on where it's not, not idolizing Hitler, but... Um, just the fact that, you know, there's this fascination with studying him and it's like just far enough, you know, just, you know, 40 years removed from, uh, yeah. the Holocaust. Uh, so like close enough where it's a, ge- you know, a generation away, but far enough where you could, where like they were looking at him more objectively as objectively as you can right right and the, uh, and and, and oh, just yeah. by by the way real quick not nominated for adapted screenplay which is I, astonishing i i gotta say and i i'm sure i haven't seen everything that's nominated for best adapted screenplay but uh i gotta call bullshit on that like <laughs> man. yeah uh no we have uh living which i i haven't seen uh top gun maverick Women Talking, which I thought was fantastic. Okay. Uh, Glass Onion, which I do not think deserves to be up there. Over White Noise. noise. Yeah. And All Quiet on the Western Front, which I I haven't seen, but I heard is really great. Yeah. Um, Yeah. No, I I, I definitely got to call bullshit on that because... Yeah, I haven't seen Glass Onion yet. I want to. Like, Oh, it's fun, but I wouldn't say that it's worthy of... Over best adapted screenplay, like over white noise. That's uh, anyway. As you as know. somebody who has read the novel and watched enough of the movie to make a judgment, uh, bad call, Academy. I know that there's other controversies around the nominations right now, but this is the real travesty. Right. Right. Yeah. So, um, shout out to Noah Baumbach, Don DeLillo, author of the of the novel White Noise. Yeah. Highly yeah, recommend, yeah. even if you've seen the movie. Uh, read the book it's fantastic so there you go uh see any other good movies lately or do you want to get into uh this 1989 masterpiece yeah i think we should uh uh jump in here to the burbs i i haven't been been getting as many movies in uh in the last several days so um i think let's jump let's jump in you want to throw out a synopsis sure yeah all right While on a week-long staycation, Ray Peterson does anything but relax once his neighbor Art starts shouting theories about their new neighbors, the Klopex. To be fair, something doesn't seem quite right with the Klopex. The yard is overgrown, the house is dank, and there are loud noises and bright lights that come from the basement each night. To their other neighbors, Ray and Art are the focus for entertainment. Young burnout Ricky sees the entire cul-de-sac as living theater. Same goes for military-obsessed Mr. Rumsfield, but everything changes once it appears as if their neighbor Walter has gone missing. Ray, Art, Rumsfield, and Rumsfield's wife Bonnie investigate, and the clues point in the direction of the Klopex house. This mania is upsetting for Ray's wife Carol, who just wants a calm vacation. But that's not a factor once Ray sends her and their son to go visit family so he and the cul-de-sac crew can expose the Klopex as Walter's murderers. But when their plan backfires and the Klopex house burns down, Ray has to eat shit and admit that they're all just misunderstood. But are they? So Tom Hanks plays Ray Peterson. Uh, Bruce Dern is Rumsfield. Carrie Fisher is Carol Peterson. Uh, We have uh, 
and you can uh, correct me on if I'm mispronouncing the name, but Rick uh, Dukeman. Dukeman, yeah, yeah. Big, Rick Dukeman uh, is big is on our stand up scene. Yeah, I just uh, I don't think I've ever said his name out loud. Uh, Corey Say it three Feldman, times and he appears. <laughs> uh, well, wouldn't that be Dukeman? 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 You know, living in the same place that Beetlejuice is living right now. Yes. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, Corey Feldman oh. is Ricky. Uh, we have Wendy Shaw as Bonnie Rumsfeld. Uh, the Clopex are played by Henry Gibson. Uh, we have uh, Brother Theodore and Courtney Gaines. So uh, it's it's a real... Um, I guess murderer's row of uh, of <laughs> actors there. Uh we also have an appearance uh by by Nikki Cat as uh one of Ricky's friends. You've seen him in a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah. Uh Days throughout and Confused. The, like, yeah. Oh like Days and Confused is a big one. Yeah. Days yeah. and Confused. Was he in like Boiler Room? I feel like he was part of that whole He was in scene. a whole bunch of stuff. And and also one other actor oh, you can cannot... Nights. Boogie Nights is another one right. he's, he's great in. Uh, one other actor that's in this that you cannot neglect is Darla as Queenie the Dog, uh, also seen in Silence of the Lambs. Oh, I knew she looked familiar. <laughs> um, yes, uh, oh, precious. Also, let's not forget the standard appearances in a Joe Dante film by Dick Miller yes. and Robert Miranda. Absolutely. Robert Miranda? Is it, isn't it? it Robert Miranda? Am I, do, do Robert I get... Picard? Robert Picard, thank you. Yeah. Robert Picardo. Picardo. That's what it is. Yes. Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, yes, they're the uh the the garbage men and um who who play a, a significant role. And uh you know, and, and you would have seen them in some of the other ones like Gremlins and yeah. Well Dick Miller like has a big big Dick role. Miller and Gremlins for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and between uh the Burbs and Gremlins, I feel like it just shows how great Joe Dante is at making, you know, small town life seem really fantastical. I guess like explorers too. Uh, there's just like, you know, the, the things that are going on around the corner. Um, yeah. <laughs> in, in gremlins, I guess it spews out a little bit more, especially in gremlins too. It's in the city. But, oh yeah. 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 No, uh, I, I think, I mean, yeah, I think in that mat, a matinee kind of place. Matinee, I yeah. I, I actually, no, matinee, matinee is different because matinee is set around like a, a naval base during like the I Cuban know it's like a Cold crisis. War. Yeah, Cuban Missile Crisis. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's really good. It's totally I worth- haven't watched that one in a long time. I watched That was it- like in, that, that was in an era where it was just like- Man, this is John John Goodman's era, and then it's just like, no, my entire life is John Goodman's yeah. era. <laughs> it's just like always there, and uh, you know, still, um, luckily, still, just like absolutely killing it. It's funny though, because I mean, you're right, and it makes me think of like just um, at, at some point watching a music video on tv so it must have been some time ago and it was like an old talking heads video and and john goodman is in it well you know you think about i mean all the movies he did with the coen brothers yeah. but also uh you know especially around the time of like matinee it was like the babe and like oh, the flintstones well, and you know yes. he was just like all over the place that was um, yeah no that yeah. was that was I mean, yeah not to mention roseanne well, I think, yeah, I mean, yeah. Roseanne obviously, like, boosted his his yeah. profile. But, yeah, anyway, um, Matinee, yeah, it, totally, like, worth checking out. I, I feel I like- to watch Mat- that one again. It kind of functions on a different level. I feel like The Burbs, so um, this was my, I, I mean, I feel like this is a movie that that I watch every several years. Like, it always feels familiar. And, like, so many- like like several other movies of that era and really like Tom Hanks movies. Yeah. I don't. And I always want to like it more than I do. And I think of it in, a, especially the burbs. I think of it in a more nostalgic way. It, it's more of the nostalgia factor. I mean, watching it, it's like, there's parts that I like, and then there's parts that are, I just kind of shr- I'm like ah uh, okay th- like, okay a- can okay. I go on I'll please. point out one specific example of this um so I think it's the scene where the dog finds a bone oh, and yeah. brings it over to Tom oh, Hanks yeah. 
and Rick Dugaman. And there's and then all of a sudden they do this like scream and the camera zooms in and out. But their scream is so fake. And it, it's so like it's SNL. Uh, it feels like a moment on SNL. And it just like, I, yes, it, it's already kind of a, um, you know, silly uh, not silly premise, actually, but it's already, you know, you already are suspending some disbelief to begin with. But then it's it's just like, uh, don't like it's too much. It goes too far. And Tom Hanks, it's, I, I don't like I don't love this Tom Hanks era of where he's just like the exasperated, uh, you know, 30 something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, whether just, it's this or like Turner and Hooch, that they yeah. just seem mm-hmm. they're so mediocre uh, to me. And like, I, I never, think that there's, but I, I Money think that Pit's another one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he had the, you know, a nice long string of, of movies where, because I think that this was, maybe this was filmed right around the same time as big, but like definitely before big came out and like kind of launched him into like this different territory. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, you know, and then of course there's dragnet, but like, uh, I, I lo- dragnet is my, but that's a different kind of, of character, era. but that's a different kind of character for him. He's not playing the like put upon, uh, flailing his arms around kind of guy. I, I no. mean, at some points he is flailing his arms around, but that's because he's fighting a giant snake. And yes, yeah. giving you know, um, but I, uh, I, you know, there's bachelor party and money pit, and there's you know, there's all those you know, yeah, Turner Hooch, the '80s Tom yeah. Hanks movies, um, that you know, it's really like a, a very fascinating time in his career. And what's also so interesting, and of course, you know, big, he doesn't play this kind of a thing, but like. You know, this is the first movie where America's dad is playing a dad. This is the first time that we're seeing Tom Hanks actually as a father. Oh, sorry. The term America's dad applied to somebody else at the time, but we're not going to talk about it. But that person we're not going to talk about. And Tom Hanks has reclaimed that title. uh, And I feel like rightfully so. I I don't know, Dan, did you see uh, a man called Otto? Um, No. I did. It's... You know, I, I I felt like I was very resistant to it while I was watching it. And then I was like coming around to it at moments. Um, but that's a different story. But that's it's interesting. I, it, it, yeah. it, 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 it sounds like it's his Gran Torino. <laughs> it, is it yeah. his Get well, Off I My mean, Lawn movie? <laughs> it is definitely his Get Off. It is very much his. I mean, he may he may as well say that line. He has a problem with people on the, in their... Um, you know, private road and things like that. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's adapted from a like Norwegian film from like okay. a couple of years ago. And I so, thought so. Yeah. I, a, a man, a man, man called, called Ove. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, exactly. I see it like streaming, and then this thing came out, and I was like, oh, it, sounds, it seems like the same thing. It so. is. It is very much okay. Um, but yeah. So anyway, but yeah. uh, you know, here you have you have Tom Hanks, and and. I know that you're talking about how you want to like this movie more than you actually do. And you maybe think about it with more fondness than you do. And, and maybe that's because it's a Joe Dante movie and we love Joe Dante. And, uh, it's this weird, bizarre comedy with like freaky deaky elements to it. It's not a horror movie, but like, yeah. The other thing is it's kind of, and it's also, and this is, you know, interesting uh, and uh, a great, uh, you know, link here. Uh, it's very much a Hitchcock, a take on Hitchcock. And I mean, this the is burbs, definitely the birds. Yeah. Well, yes, there's, well, there's, there's that. that, but there's that. But then it's also essentially rear window. It is basically rear window. And Tom Hanks who Joe Dante referred to as like the the uh, uh J- James Stewart yeah yeah of that era I mean many people said that but uh Dante actually is quoted as saying that in like why he cast Tom Hanks in this um so 
yeah, I, it, I'm looking for that quote. But anyway, yeah, it, no, no, no. Said, it's it's absolutely um, a very clear parallel. I, I mean, it's this. It's a it's an actor who you look at and you think like, I uh, I don't. I I realize that I see him in the same, you know, he's he's the same actor I see in all these other movies, but for yeah. some reason I don't care. I just like watching him. He's very just like agreeable. He you know usually very likable. Occasionally usually plays very a character likable. that is not likable. Uh though I don't think Jimmy Stewart ever went so far as to do like like I, I feel like we're all supposed to forget about Tom Hanks in Elvis. Uh <laughs> well, yeah. Like, uh, wow, uh, it was terrible. Um, yes, it was. But uh, back back to the burbs. Uh, you know who I do really like in this movie? And by the way, um, it, Bruce Stern typecast as a um, affected uh, Vietnam War veteran. Like, this yeah. is, I think, the third movie I can even think of that he plays this type of character. So I, I think he won an Oscar for uh, coming home based on oh, playing, yeah. yeah, the, the, you know, realistic version of this, but I love Corey Feldman in this. Oh, Corey Feldman's amazing in this. And it's just such a perfect role for him. He does it spot on. He's, you know, he's just like loving watching his neighbors completely melt down and invites all of his friends over and the pizza guys come in. Oh yeah. And, and as soon as any of his friends, and I love how he convinces his friends when they're like, why are we just sitting on your porch? And he's like, no, just wait. Like something yeah. crazy is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's also it's interesting because the whole time you're you're of course wondering, like, all right, is there anything really nefarious going on? And you're given just enough to think that there is, but also not enough to know that there is, and yeah. just enough to doubt it and say, this could be a bunch of like bored suburban guys with nothing better to do. Which, you know, yeah. Rio again, uh, not well, suburban, but yeah, uh, but I think that, uh, yes, it's it's bored suburban people with nothing to do. And I think that that's kind of the the idea until you uh, get a closer look at the Clopex and you're just like, yeah, but they, there's there's something to this. Like, there's right. something going on. Uh, and. Uh, until kind of like the end, you know, you're you kind of are left wondering where it's just like, you know, the way that I'm seeing them, is that the way that they really are? Or is that like more of the way that we're supposed to be seeing them because it's the way that Ray is seeing them and it's the way that art is seeing them? Um, and if I can yeah. make and on that note, like and watching it from a contemporary perspective, I'm like, oh, are we just supposed to be suspicious because they're ethnic? Like, because they're yeah. like Eastern European. Slavic. Yeah. Yeah. They're Slavic. So we're supposed to be suspicious of them. And then, like, I mean, okay, I, I think we can talk about the ending because it's been like 34 years yeah, since yeah. it came out. So, I mean, it turns out that, like, they did not, they did not kill the neighbor. <laughs> Okay, right. But. So they're suspected of killing the neighbor, and uh, after Ray, Tom Hanks, like, accidentally burns their house down, which is the second time that their house is burned down in a row, they they move because their house burned down, uh, he find like, and he hears about, like, how the doctor is, like, a well-respected doctor, and, you know, Dr. Werner Klopek, and... He and Tom Hanks is just like, I was such a fool. They are completely normal people. We've been the monsters here. We're the ones who are all screwy. They're totally fine. Like, I deserve to go to jail because I ruined this. I'm going to pay for this. house. I'm going to make sure that your house gets built back properly and everything. And uh, then we discover that the Klopex have a trunk, the trunk of their car filled with you know, bones and skeletons and skulls and whatnot. Yeah. They didn't kill the neighbor. They killed the previous, the previous owner of the house, yeah. <laughs> which is also like, <laughs> did nobody realize that? I don't know. Like they never moved say out. 
Yeah, they never moved out. They uh, was there anything about them even being dead? I don't know. Like, or was there something in the beginning where, like, didn't there must have been some? I think there was something where they talk about how, like, just how they moved out so quickly. There might have been, but Maybe. it would have been very, very quick. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, but it's. I, I realize that. I, I understand what you're saying about not loving this movie as much as you think you want to love this movie. Yeah. For me, I uh, when I you know I watched it probably maybe five years ago was the last time, and then watching it you know a week or so ago, I you know I just enjoyed myself because it's such a silly adventure and. Uh, you know, it's I think that also there's something to it that I was really appreciating because of the the scale of the film. And, you know, we're recording this in 2023. We have just gone through a few years of lockdown and, you know, quarantining and <laughs> and people having to figure out how to make movies that are so insular and I was like, man, this is such, this would be such a great like COVID era movie to do where it's like, maybe this takes place like, I don't know, March 20th, 2020 mm. and everybody's on lockdown and, uh, you know, everyone's at quarantine and they're going crazy because they don't know if it's safe to leave the house. Like maybe they've, they're, they've agreed that like the neighborhood, the cul-de-sac is their bubble and they're going to stay in it or something. You know, it's like there's... There's so much that you could do with the burbs in that way. And I think that, you know, seeing a lot of movies coming out now that were filmed in 2021, you know, where people are having to deal with a lot of different COVID protocols, uh, you see that in, uh, you know, you're finally starting to see movies that are addressing COVID uh, as part of the story, whether it's Glass Onion, I th there's been a few other ones that I've seen where it's been acknowledged that there's been lockdown and, and quarantine. Oh. And so uh, it's almost like when I see opportunities where that could have been done, it's just like, oh, wonderful. Like this is so this would be so perfect for that kind of a thing. And so I think that watching the burbs for me this time, I was looking at it from this perspective of like, Oh yeah, what an awesome opportunity to like have such a small cast and crew and just be like living it on on these sets essentially and just kind of like <laughs> being in this world. Wow. So is that your uh your remake? I think it is. I think that it is a a COVID era uh the burbs. I mean, I think that it's certainly a movie that you can do a remake of and not piss off you know legions of loyal fans it's right you know it's a, it's a cult classic and i think that it's like in you know under the right people it could be such a, a perfect kind of project and um you know i i know this is somebody whose name we've floated around a lot for things but i i thought of him because i i didn't meet joe dante but i was like oh Shit, that's Joe Dante. When I was at a screening of uh, Scott Pilgrim and Edgar Wright was with Joe Dante. And I was like, so I was thinking like, you know, Edgar Wright would be such a, a cool person to do this. You know, seeing what he did with like Last Night in Soho and, yeah, and you know, so many yeah. of those are things where it's just like, you know, he he can do things pretty dark and weird. And, and you know, clearly he's a capable director and can do almost anything. He can do comedy, that's for sure. And uh, this would be such a fun thing that I'm sure that he would love to do. And, um, you know, I was thinking about people that I would love to see. I wasn't thinking about a whole cast, but I was thinking, like, who could be a good, like, put upon Ray Peterson? And the only person I could think of was Donald Glover, which is another person that we've talked about for being part of remakes. It's been a while since his name has come up. Yeah. But I was just like, oh, he is the right age to do this. Like, you can totally see him doing this role. Um, I do acknowledge that uh, in a in a movie called The Burbs, which I feel like it should still be The Burbs, it should still take yeah. place in a cul-de-sac because nothing is weirder than the suburbs sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, you definitely get this you know the 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 close knit 
neighbors, even though they don't necessarily like each other, they are a unit together because they are forced to be a unit together. And uh, I, I think that also it, it would have to be acknowledged, you know, that I, I don't know, like the burbs aren't typically thought to be, I, I don't know, at least in this one, it's a very white situation. And I, so yeah. I think that like, once you have uh, somebody of a different ethnicity, that isn't, slavic or whatever you know in the in the neighborhood it you know raises other thoughts that could be addressed uh i think that there's a lot of opportunity and we just have like a lot of really incredible uh actors who can like really do fun comedic stuff and also get into the really weird stuff another director i was thinking of actually uh is uh and he did uh werewolves within is uh josh rubin I think oh. that he would be so much fun with something like this. Yes, I love yeah. Werewolves Within. And yeah. you know who I was thinking? So you said Edgar Wright. I was thinking Joe Cornish because I, oh, I was yeah, thinking of Attack well, yeah. the Block. Uh, just kind of like that whole idea and the energy of, of that. Attack but, the Burbs. Uh, attack the Burbs. There, there you go. It, you could blend the cinematic universes uh but no i i actually really like that that idea of um uh who was it you said josh josh rubin josh rubin okay yeah um so uh but just thinking of werewolves within and the tone of that and how that you know that that combination i i definitely i see that in fact well I, and we're I want to werewolves see werewolves within is actually you know pretty similar to the burbs it's this small town where there are these killings going on and everybody's suspecting everybody else and, yeah uh, not to say it's you know the same but it's, there are no, similar no, no. themes yeah 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 i um i i really like it and I, I, of course, like, I don't know if Josh Rubin and Sam Richardson are frequent or like, you know, if it's just a one time oh, deal, but oh, yeah, like, Sam Richardson, I, you got to find a place for him in this. Like it doesn't, the other thing with remaking this movie, cause that was also my, my suggestion was, was going to be a remake, but you don't have to have like the same characters. I think you have to have that, like that, you know, kind of worn out, put upon, suburban parent whoever it's going to be like i was the first person that came to my mind was Kristen wig uh oh yeah i i, I think uh, yeah she she would be awesome in and there then i thought i was way. like if you were gonna totally flip, flip i was like i was like what if it was like Kristen wig and I, and then i started just like kind of doing this like melissa mccarthy in, in yeah. the rick dukeman role which i mean i understand that's you know or or uh i, I could also see annie mumolo in the oh. uh yeah <laughs> in the rick dukeman role i uh, but you she's also fantastic do, like you could also expand it and you know have uh you know you don't have to have these just these types or all of these types oh. well dan before we before we start talking about too many other things i do want to come back to talking about sam richardson because if we have sam richardson in the ray peterson role you know who i think would be great in the rumsfield role tim robinson oh wait okay tim I think robinson I, I, was... I think you should leave they did detroiters oh, together i know that tim robinson and sam richardson you know are like best friends so and they they're constant oh, okay. collaborators too and no oh, and oh, nobody go goes over the top the way that tim robinson goes over the top uh, you know who else though uh you know who else though would would be fun in that role and and i think about like over the top what about gabrus Oh my God, John Gabrus! What about John uh, Gabrus in a remake of The Burbs? You know, I'm trying to think of like what in what role would you put him? I mean, the run. I, I oh, was he would the, be the art. He, like, he would totally be the art. The art, you think? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, absolutely. And and I know that he would he would love doing that. Past guest, John yeah. Gabrus. Yes, yes, long time ago. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, because I was also thinking remake. Uh, I like your uh, the, the twist of of COVID and and quarantines and bubbles and yeah, you know, setting it during that. Also, because I can relate to like getting a new neighbor during that because it was only like a couple of months into the quarantine that our next door neighbors moved in, and it was like we don't know anything, and like, are they 
and because they also like bought the like the house was in really bad shape that they bought so like we didn't know if they were just gonna flip it or what they were doing which it turns out like they're renovating it to live in it um uh and my neighbor's a, a contractor so uh-huh. he uh but like when they first moved in and like there were all these people there were like they're not wearing masks i mean they were like all like in like family like immediate family <laughs> Um, yeah, but I remember what it was, you know, I also remember what it was like doing something like going to the supermarket in the early days and like being about to turn a corner and be like, oh no, what if I'm, what if, what if somebody who's not wearing a mask is standing right there when I turn the corner? What if there's literally anybody there? Yeah. Is it safe to be here? Yeah. 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 But Um, if you're in your, your safe little cul-de-sac. And you don't feel comfortable leaving. No one's comfortable coming in. You know, it's one of those situations where, you know, that first, those first few weeks, especially of COVID, it was just like, oh, nobody yeah. knows what's okay, what's not okay. If you said it yeah. then, and you could, I mean, easily yeah, establish that. And you know who else, John? I know, you know, you said that you hadn't thought of too many cast members, but I already know what you're what you're thinking perhaps before you're thinking it but in the Corey feldman role of course jacob tremblay (laughs) (laughs) i think he's still a little too young i don't i don't know where where we're at right now with him um i could see finn wolfhard okay yeah yeah i you know right i think he he does the whole long hair thing and okay let's talk a little bit more about Corey feldman at this point because i think that it's cool that he is in this role where, you know, he's not starring in the movie. It's not a movie that's like really focused on a character like him. You know, he's, uh, I mean, when was like dream a little dream? It was probably right around here. Um, uh, actually I, like possibly very close. Let me double check release dates, but yeah. So uh, I think it's cool that he was doing a movie like this during a time when like, you know, he was starring in movies uh hanging out with michael jackson uh and i i know that he was also like going through a bunch of other struggles and you know he was kind of being looked after by uh by carrie fisher and i think bruce stern and yeah i i just think that he was a uh it's really cool that he was in this role and yeah he was so, so perfect for it Dream a little dream, and also Corey Feldman had his history with Joe Dante being in in Gremlins, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, so the uh the Burbs was released February seventeenth, nineteen eighty nine. Dream a little dream was released March third, nineteen eighty nine. Interesting. Yes. Wow. Real, very real a, moment a to be to be discussed. Feldman. Yes. A movie we have discussed. That is right. Yes. Um, and body swap episode. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk also a little bit more about, uh, you know, you mentioned that Bruce Dern had done a few other movies playing a similar type. Well, I guess a character who had, who was going through similar things. This is definitely a more comedic turn. And, uh, which you, I, I don't like- know that you would see this ty- type of, of, role as much today no 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 because you would that that type of thing is taken more seriously post-traumatic stress disorder which to a certain degree i mean he's definitely um you know uh, there's definitely some of that going on (laughs) oh yeah for sure uh you know it's interesting because he kind of he makes a, a bit of a turn going from like mocking ray and art to like teaming up with them yeah. and uh, you know i think that it just kind of like plays into his vibe uh to you know make this discovery of who the clopex are into more of a mission a more coordinated effort and uh but he's still a total spaz and i love seeing bruce stern in roles like that um yeah yeah. He's just uh an absolute delight. I feel like when I think about him now, I don't typically think about him in roles like this. I think about him more in his, you know, latter part of his career, things like Nashville, uh Nebraska? 
Nebraska, not Nashville. Nashville's which, Robert Altman. Which, by the way, since yeah. you mentioned that, as I'm looking at Bruce Stern's Wikipedia page right now. And I mean, yeah, I know it's Wikipedia, but like in kind of the intro before the early life section, when it lists like, you know, presumably career highlights, it does not include Nebraska on there, which I believe he was, uh, I mean, Oscar nominated for, but he yeah. was also like, I mean, it was like his movie, you know? It was a great movie. It, I it, loved they, it. They mentioned Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where he's in like a scene. Where he's laying in a bed the whole time. Yeah. Um, um but also to to type back it's to probably the, just it's probably just referring to movies movies that he was in that have had like more critical acclaim and you know accolades you mean like the artist's wife in 2019 <laughs> maybe not then maybe not maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong um, person they do mention black sunday which is uh the the other movie where he plays a oh, okay. traumatized vietnam That's the, the war third. veteran yeah yeah which if have you ever seen black sunday no, I haven't. I think it's uh, John Frankenheimer. R- really good. Really, oh, really? Yeah. Real, uh, really good. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a you know really good like thriller, terrorism-related thriller um, focusing around a terrorist plot against the Super Bowl. So, ooh. Timely. Um, oh, my. So, anywho. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Bruce Stern, uh, Nebraska is great, and it is abs. I agree with you. It is fun seeing him in in this role, and I I think it, he seems to be having a lot of fun. Got him on the roof, <laughs> snacking on his oh, animal crackers. Wow! Yes, uh, John has a box of animal crackers right now, like the I, real deal animal. Crackers. I was at the. Um, I was at the store earlier and I saw the like, you know, Barnum's animal crackers. And I was like, oh, my God, Bruce Dern eats those in the burbs. I have to <laughs> spend the three dollars on this for the visual effect for one person only. So worth it. I wish I was there to share those with you right now. Animal crackers are delicious. They are a delightful thing. They're not crackers. They're cookies, but they are absolutely cookies. Yeah. Um, but I'll call them animal crackers till the day I die. So, Dan, I know it's been a while since we've done something like this, but I have a bit of a quiz for you. Nice. So, All right. The Burbs is one of the, uh, I guess, few movies where I've seen an apostrophe, uh, an appropriately used apostrophe. Yes. In which, you know... it. I'd say that if it didn't have the apostrophe before the B in Burbs, we'd all be fine. And most yeah. people probably forget that it's there in the first place. Mm-hmm. But it has one, and I appreciate that. Dan, I want to ask you, I'm going to list a few movies, and I want you to tell me if it has one or if it needs one. And I'm like, talking apostrophes you, here. Are you saying, so if the title is formally written with a, a so it's like a two-part Dan, question, does, does it have one and does it need one? No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you a title. Some of these titles uh, have apostrophes. Right. And some of them don't have apostrophes, but need them. Got it. But in order to be grammatically correct, need them. Understood. All right. So I so feel Dan, I feel confident. This is grammar's my Dan, you are you are a, a language arts high school teacher. I, I have full faith that you're going to uh that you're gonna nail this. But there are some one there's some in here that are gonna be a little little atypical. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Uh mm-hmm. let's start with a recent movie. Uh and, and this one I, I quite enjoyed. I don't know if you saw it. Uh directed by Mike Mills. Come on, come on. Has the Does apostrophes. It- it does. It, that one has two apostrophes, yeah. so it has two. Doesn't need yeah. any. It's no. got them. Yeah. Um, it's got the. It's got them. I uh, didn't see it, but I, 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 I remember seeing the title, and I would have definitely noticed had there not been apostrophes. Okay. Singing in the rain. Does it have one or does it need one? Singing in the rain. Dan is thinking. He's looking up. Into the corner. 
Yeah, I'm not looking anything up, mind you. I am just looking up. Looking at, up. I do not have any. Singing in the singing rain. Singing in the rain, anything with me. I am going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And I, I want you to know, I'm, I think I'm going against my instinct here. But I'm going to say it does not have one, but it should. It does have one. It does have one. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm pick, I'm like trying to picture the poster and I'm like, I don't know if that's a raindrop or an apostrophe <laughs> in my Maybe mental image. In my mental image. So yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. All right, Dan. Two weeks notice. Two weeks notice. Oh shit. Two weeks notice. Hold on. Sandra Bullock. Okay. Does not have one. Is that your final answer? It, my final answer is do, does not have one, but I'm trying to think of whether or not it needs one. Dan, it does not have one, but it does need one. Okay. Yeah. That yes. I was, that's where I was. Uh, that's, that's where I was. Uh, Kind of stuck because, yeah, yeah, I okay. would, I would think, I would, I would, yeah, definitely lean towards the apostrophe there. All right, let's go with the 2014 film 71. Has an apostrophe. It does have an apostrophe. Yep. Uh, all right, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. There's, for some reason, I want to say it has one, but it's in the wrong place. But that wasn't given to me as an option to answer. So I'm going to guess that it has one. And it's it correct. needs one. It does, oh, does not it? have one. Oh, okay. No. Uh, so it's in the wrong place, meaning not even in the title. So, okay. So I was I was totally off on that. Yeah. Uh, the ladies man. The ladies man, Tim Meadows. Doesn't have one, needs one. That is correct. We're going to go now to the, uh, the 2017 film Till Death Do Us Part starring Tay Diggs. Has one. Needs one. What? Oh, really? Really? It does not have one in there. Oh, wow. I was confident on that one. Hmm. Uh, and I appreciate your speedy response. I'm going to go to another one. Couples Retreat. This is starring Has one. Vince Vaughn. Has one. Needs one. It does Wait, not what? have oh, one. Oh, that. Oh, damn it. Couples Retreat. Oh, the one with Vince Vaughn. I saw yeah. that in the theater, too. <laughs> Oof. But Date you did night. not see an apostrophe because it was missing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Dan, I, right. have one, I have one more for you. Okay. The 2010 movie, Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. Doesn't have one, doesn't need one. It has one between the ga and the hool. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Gahul, you. Ah. All right, Dan. Well, you lost that game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, they're you know, they're revoking your teaching license if that's the thing that even exists. I don't even know. I, I do have a certificate, but you have a certificate. Okay, I, 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 I like. I would at least be able to look at the titles. I was not looking at any of the titles. I was trying to do this all from memory and or imagination. <laughs> so I nailed it on Ladies Man, though. You know, you know what, Dan? I uh, this is a very hard quiz. I will say, you that. know why, and you know why I got Ladies Man so well because anytime I'm like scrolling through a streaming service and it's streaming, I kind of pause on it because I remember liking it. Well, I mean, it's Tim Meadows; he's great. Like, yeah, you know, how bad could it really be? Well, I've seen it before. Like, I, yeah. I saw it. I, but like, if you're going to watch it again, like, could you? How bad of a time would you have? No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's fun. It's like Tim Meadows and and like Billy D. Williams is in it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's fun. But that's, <laughs> I think that's how I knew that one. Um, yeah. So, could but yeah, well, uh, right. ones that come up, I. Uh, 
you know, frequently that need them grammatically are two weeks notice and couples retreat. Those are the ones. And um, I was very curious about a movie that has the word till I, uh, because grammatically speaking, I think that, you know, because some people spell it T I L L. Some people spell it T I L. Uh, I don't know where that extra L is necessarily coming from. It's one of those it's, words that it's has wrong. It's wrong, but it's one of those words that has technically become a word because if it's frequent use. Well, no, a till is something else. I understand, yes. but the definition of a shortened version of until as T-I-L-L has since become an acceptable way to spell that, which I disagree with. Not to but me. I, Not in my classroom. Right. And so the the way to do it would be T-I-L – Ideally, with an apostrophe before it, but such is not the case. Till death do us part. So, uh, when I was looking up a lot of like, you know, till death and things like that, like right. they would have the apostrophe usually. So, uh, I found that pretty interesting and, you know, good on them for slinging that, get that little guy on singing in the rain. And, uh, I, I wouldn't, uh, put it past Mike Mills to do it, do right by come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely started with an easy one because I think that's another one. Like I've seen it so many times as I've been scrolling through things. Have you have you seen the movie? No, honestly, I like it looks very good, but it looks like one of those movies that will tap into my emotions in yeah. in a way that I am just not strong enough to handle at this. At this I point. I hear you. I hear you. It's it's wonderful. I, I loved it a lot. Like, I, I'm, I'm all big, good. I'm all good. I'm a, yeah, I'm right. a big softie for for Mike Mills. I mean, he knows well, how to really get me with his stuff. I I thought Beginners was fabulous. Uh, oh, Beginners is great. Yeah, and then did he do uh, Chum Chum Scrubber? Was that? Uh, oh, he did Thumb Sucker. That's what I'm thinking of. Okay. Yeah. I feel, uh, I feel Chum like Scrubber I and good. Thumb Sucker came out around the same time, and I remember it being a little confusing. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Makes me feel better. Yeah. Um. And he did 20th Century Women. He's he's fantastic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh but yeah, so anyway, that's uh that's what I got for the uh for the quiz. Thank you for participating. You did poorly, but maybe next time in the has what or needs one quiz you will uh knock it out of the park. Uh, uh yeah, next time I won't hit the Advil so heavily. Hey, I am three Advil in and most of the wine that I poured for myself, and I'm feeling groovy, baby. Well, yeah, uh, fucking quiz master over there. And 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 speaking of people who are uh, on pain meds, do you want to uh, talk yes. about our next movie? Well, we already did talk about our next movie because our next movie is going to be Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. Yeah, uh, which I didn't know <laughs> if you made had made that connection when we were kind of planning out our episodes. I and didn't while we were planning it out, but then once I was watching the Burbs, I was like, "Oh, it's Rear Window." <laughs> Well, because do you remember how we were talking about, I forget if it was like we were going to do something else instead of Rear Window or The Burbs, but I was like, no, we're doing this. Uh, vaguely, but It was yeah. one or the other, but I was like, yeah, we have to do The Rear Window right after The Burbs. Well, uh, uh, well, we had talked about how we were, you know, wanted to do another Hitchcock movie. Uh, I think Vertigo we was the last one, and... Um, it's the only one, right? Have we done any others? Yeah, I was trying no. to think. I can't. Sometimes I can't remember if we've done North by Northwest or not because I watched it recently. We always it's like it's, yeah. North by Northwest. I think for both of us is one of those that we could kind of just always. Oh, totally, and I'd be to. happy to. Yeah, um, but yeah, uh, Rear Window, um, such a such a I don't know in, incredible film, and I'm excited to talk about it on starring the, next one. the Tom Hanks of his time, James Stewart. Yeah. Well, uh, Dan, as you are speeding away in your car filled with bones and skulls and whatnot, I wish oh, you a yeah. good journey. Good journey.